Welcome to Post Builder Lesson 2. In this lesson, we will start Post Builder and create and test a three axis post processor. Hi, my name is Jim Wright. Let's begin the lesson. So, in our lesson plan, we will start Post Builder, create a three axis post processor using Post Builder, we will test that post processor, then we will make a modification to the order of the G codes and make a modification to the G code output. So how do you start Post Builder? If you're using a standard Microsoft desktop, you choose Start, All Programs, Siemens NX followed by whatever your, the current version is that you're using, Manufacturing, and then click on the Post Builder tab. Okay, let's get started. This is the Post Builder dialog before a post has been opened or created. I want to take a look at a couple of options that are actually on the dialog before we begin. Under Options, I have several things that I can turn on or off. One is Validate Custom Commands. This allows me to check for unknown commands, unknown blocks, unknown addresses. Backup post allows me to save backups. My recommendation is to backup every save and then once you've completed the post you can always delete the backups. Another option is to enable the user defined events editor. Uh, I would leave this as yes. And finally we have language control. I'm using English so I'll leave it in the English language. Under utilities there's a very handy item called browse mom variables. We'll take a look at that in a future lesson. So let's create a post. File, new. The parameters dialog allows me to select the parameters that I want to turn on for this new post. First, give it a name. I'll call this my first three axis machining post. I can identify a description. This happens to be a good description for me, so I'll leave it like it is. This is a main post. What that means is this is the only post that I'm using for this post processor unit. In later lessons, we'll explore combining or linking posts together to make a complex post processor for a mill turn. I prefer metric output, so I'll choose millimeters as my post output. Notice that enable UDE editors turned on. The machine is a mill. I have several options here. Three axis, three axis mill turn, four axis with either a rotary table or a rotary head, and then five axis of three different varieties. I'll choose three axis. Finally, I can choose the control. Under control, we have obviously Siemens controls. We also support Fanuc, both a 30i and a Fanuc 6m, and Heidenheim conversational. We also support some older controls like the Cincinnati Acromatic 2100s and Acromatic 5s. Bostomatics are there, Fidal. So we have several different controls that we offer support for. I'll choose a Fanuc 6M post because that is a very generic G-code post and that allows me to do some modifications later on when we get into some of the TCL language lessons. Choose OK. And my new post is created. The first thing I like to do is see what the output is. So I'll save this post. I'll save it in my scratch directory so that all my backups are easily deleted later on. I'll use the name 3axis1. Now I want to test my post. I do that by calling up a session of NX or CAM Express. I already have a 
file with some NC toolpaths already on it. So I want to post process those. To save time, I'll choose one operation and post process it. This operation roughs out the area of the top of this mold insert. I'll post process it all by itself. Post process. This is a list of installed post processors. I don't have my post on the list yet, so I'll choose browse for a post processor. Navigate to the directory where my post processor is and then choose OK. Here's my first posted output. So as I look at my NC output there are a couple of things that I realize I need to change. The first is this G71 code. Uh, the G71 code is actually a toggle for a machine tool to run from either inch or metric. G71 is the metric code, G70 is the inch code. Uh, about half the machines that I've made post-processors for use G70, G71. The other half use G20 G21 and that's the case for my machine. It actually uses a G20, G21 so I need to change that G code. The other thing I see is that I would like to have the absolute code which is this one right here G90. I would like to have that placed at the beginning of the line rather than being in third position. Um, absolute mode code means that the machine is always running from a pre-programmed position or a machine 000, zero position program zero we sometimes call it. The other alternative to absolute mode is incremental mode. In incremental mode all the positions are measured from the current position that the machine tool is in. So big difference between absolute and incremental mode. So I want to have G90 first and then I want to follow that up with G21 not G71. So let's make those changes. I'll close this output, minimize the Cam Express dialog. And now I'll return to my post builder. As I look at this post builder dialog, there are five major tabs across the top here. There's the machine tool tab, the program and toolpath tab, NC data definitions, output settings, and virtual NC controllers. We will explore all of these tabs. Uh, I'll start off with the machine tool tab. The machine tool tab allows you to put in basic parameters about the machine tool. For example, what are the linear axis travel limits in X, Y, and Z? What is the motion resolution? In other words, what is the, the best resolution that this machine tool supports? How fast can the machine move in rapid mode? This helps us when we're doing time calculations. For some machine tools, they also need to mirror the output Perhaps they don't use the standard Cartesian coordinate system output. Maybe the x-axis direction is backward or the y-axis direction is backward. Sometimes even the z-axis direction is backwards. So these are toggles that we can turn on or off to mirror that machine tool setting. And then finally we have a display machine tool button which does just that. It gives you a picture of what the machine tool would look like. Not so helpful for a three-axis machining center but it gets to be very helpful when we're doing a 5-axis machining center. The next tab is where I'm going to be making the changes that I stated I was going to make. The Program and Toolpath tab. It has a lot of sub-tabs along with it. There's Program, G-Codes, M-Codes, Word Summary, Word Sequencing, Custom Command, Linked Posts, and Macro. We're not going to explore all these tabs at once, but I do want to explore the G-Codes tab. Remember I mentioned that my machine tool uses G20, G21 rather than G70, G71. So the G-Codes tab looks like a logical place to start to make those kinds of changes. 
And sure enough, here is a listing of all the different G codes that are available for this particular machine tool. The code that I want to change is intrametric mode. Notice that it's set to G70, G71. So I'll just go in here and delete G70, replace it with G20. Same thing for the metric mode. Change that G20 to G21. Now that that change has been made, Post Builder will propagate that change anywhere that particular code is required. So I change it once, changes it everywhere. It's really nice. The other thing I said that I wanted to change was the word sequencing. How do I change the sequence of words? Well, we have a tab called word sequencing. Let's click on that. This is a list of all the different G codes that are available for this post and the order in which they will be output. Now not all of these G codes will be output on every line of course, but if they are, this is the order that they will be output in. So in this case I have G90 way here towards the back and I said I wanted that towards the front. So I'm just going to hold down with mouse button 1 and as I drag that along you'll notice that it tries to attach itself to the closest G code. If I were to release it here it would swap positions with that G code. If I release it in between it will go into that position between those two G codes and not do, perform any kind of a swap. I said I wanted this G code at the very beginning so I'll drag it up until it's at the very front of the G code list and let go. And now G90 is at the beginning of the list. The G code that I would like to have second is uh, G20, G21 and that happens to be the last G code on the list. So I come over here, grab it, move it up, and release it in the second position. Notice that as I move it over it says this is other G codes G20, G21 is already listed. So that change has already been propagated. So now I've got G90, G9, G21 and then followed by the other G codes. Now you'll notice that some of these G codes are uh, pink, I guess that's the color, and then others are blue. So what is the difference? Well in this case, pink means it will be output, blue means it's suppressed. So if I have a, a G code or really any word that I don't ever want to see in my post, I can simply click on it and that G code or that word address will be permanently suppressed, never output. Okay, so we made those two changes. Let's check our output again. Save this file. Return to Cam Express or NX, whichever you're using. Post process again. Notice that now my 3x's post is on the list. This is only temporarily. It will be on the list until I close Cam Express or NX and then reopen it. Um, I'll show you later on how to make it a permanent addition to this list. Choose OK. Now I've got G90 as my first code and G21 as my second code. That matches what I wanted, so I'm very happy with that. So to summarize this lesson, you learned how to start the Post Builder product, you learned how to create a 3-axis post processor using Post Builder, you learned how to test that post processor, Finally, you learned how to modify the G-code order and the G-code output. Some tips. To change G-code values, in Post Builder, go to the Program and Toolpath tab and then click on the G-codes subtab. But if you prefer to change the G-codes order, it's the same main tab, Program and Toolpath, but then you should select the Word Sequencing subtab. And the answer to the question, how many post processors can Post Builder open at once? The answer is one. If you want to open a second post processor, you'll need to save and close the first one. Thanks for viewing. Our next lesson will be more about G codes. See you then.